transformational impact we have in our spiritual community with y'all, the CSL organization, which is big y'all, and the community at large, which is Ocala, Florida, the United States, the world, the universe, the cosmos, 
whatever you want to think of it. And our mission is to empower individuals to awaken to the power and presence that lies within them and all around them so they may live their very best lives. And if this happens, then guess what? We will be that model center for spiritual living. If every single person is able to become empowered. All right, and so we start with this. But before we even go there, let us go ahead and do a quick little drop in. And thank you, Mary Lou and Norma, for the sound.
What's that? Oh, turn on. Am I on? Yeah. Oh, there's one. Yeah. I love that video. I love yeah. it. And so many things about it, right? The, just the message, because emotions are contagious, what we do is contagious. You know, when somebody is fired up and angry, it spreads. Mm. When people are, are afraid, it spreads. But when people are kind and they're decent to each other, it spreads. And he had amazing advice. <laughs> so many wonderful things. Oh, welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see you here this morning, this Sunday morning on Road to City Drives. And do we have a few first time visitors, a couple first time visitors? Raise your hand if you make your first time. Well, for sure. I thought you were too, but yeah, you. We know you. <laughs> and sometimes visitors. So, well, we are just one of many centers for spiritual living that are all over the world. And we have um, themes that we're doing for the year as an organization. Now, not all of the centers follow them, and I haven't always followed them, but I love the theme for this year, which is Living Everyday Wonder. It's like for the whole year. And every month is a different topic of wonder. So we talked about everyday wonder in our inner life. We talked about everyday wonder, what else? Just everyday wonder in play, that was last month. So this month is everyday wonder in our creativity. So I love this topic, and uh, I think it's going to be, a, I hope it's a good time for you. So recognize, release, and rise. Repeat. Recognize, release, and rise. Repeat, right. So this idea of creativity, do you even know what that means? How many of you are creative? Raise your hand if you're a creative person. Actually, everybody's hands should be up everybody's hands because creativity is not something that is just meant for the few you know whether you're an artist or a dancer you may think and own that creativity but the fact is that we are all creating all the time so what is it the creative act does not create something out of nothing think about that everything that you could possibly need to create anything already exists are we creating things out of thin air no. All of the heart, all of the material, all of the matter, all the resources already exist in some form or fashion. So we're not creating something out of nothing. What the creative act does is uncover, select, reshuffle, combine, and synthesize already existing facts, ideas, faculties, and skills. So what we're doing is taking all of these different parts and rearranging them in different ways. That's where the creativity is, right? If you cook, you know, you put your your meal together with a few little ingredients, a little extra this and that, that maybe makes it just yours, right? Mm -hmm. That's your creativity, so we all have it. And the more familiar those parts that we're working with and rearranging, the more striking it is when you put things like, that don't necessarily go together, or I never thought of it that way. So we are all creating all of the time. And Donna and Norma, kudos to you all. How many of you were here last week? couple of you. Okay. Well, if you weren't, you need to watch last week because they did a phenomenal job of explaining the basic law of creation and what we believe in Centers for Spiritual Living and in New Thought, like what this is all about. So the, the law of creation. The basic law is right there in front of you. And thank you again for just sharing it so beautifully and so clearly. And if you were not here, watch it because it was recorded. It was really wonderful. So I'm not going to go over everything that they taught you last week. Go back and watch it for yourself. <laughs> but the basic law of creation is that we reap what we sow, like seeds in the ground, right? You put a tomato seed in the ground, you're going to expect to get a tomato plant. You don't plant tomatoes and get oranges, right? It's silly. It's an, it's an absurd idea. And yet, this is, you know, we, we are creating all of the time our thoughts. Thoughts are things. So what we are putting out there into the world, what we're putting into the soil of the universe, so to speak, is seed, is seed. So you wanna be careful what you're putting out there, out there. You can't put negativity out in the world and expect to get positivity back, right? When you put kindness out, it comes back. That's what that video just showed us. So what we, what we put out there is what comes back to us. It's, it is infallible. Now we don't always, just like you plant a seed in the ground, not everything grows, right? 
Some things grow, some things you nurture, some things you pay attention to, and they grow better. And sometimes, you know, you put the thing in the ground and it just, nothing happens. You know, so, so we don't know, but this is the basic law of creation. And essentially what you pay attention to and what you nurture, where you focus your energy, is what is going to grow in your life. You're gonna get more of that. So be careful what you're putting out there. Ernest Holmes says this, life has entered into you, you, me, all of us, and with it, this irresistible urge to create. Create or perish is the eternal mandate of nature. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right? So we all have this urge. It's just part of life. It's, we're continually in this upward spiral. In the moment, you don't always feel like it, right? Like that, that top, you know, you're, you're, you can't see the forest for the trees because you're so much in it that you can't see the bigger picture. Sometimes you have to step back to realize it. But the fact is, none of us brought ourselves here, right? There was some other force, some other power, some other thing that created each and every one of us. You may think you're a self-made person. Mm-hmm. None of us, right? I mean, make another person. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Make a human being. Why don't you? Here's some, some, some dirt, a few elements. Do it. <laughs> right? We can't. We can't. It's, it's silly. It's a silly idea even. So there is something certainly that is, that is bigger than all of us that is wanting expression through us. And so your life, your life is your masterpiece. Again, even if you don't think you're creative, the life that you are living right now is your creation. So good news or bad news? Hmm. Depends. <laughs> Depends, right? <laughs> Depends on when you ask, right? In this moment, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Like I can own that. My life is a masterpiece. Anybody else? Does that excite you, that idea that your life is your masterpiece? Yeah, it's okay if it doesn't, (laughs) because we all have those moments. We create in constructive ways, or we create in destructive ways. Either way, creativity is going to find its expression. Mm. You know, I'm so grateful. Whoever thought of the order of how we were presenting this was really brilliant. And I don't think it was a specific person. I think it was just like dropped in, you know, spirits of this is the way to do it. Because we talked about play last month, and I shared with you how um, I'm one of those oldest children who's very responsible and has to get everything done before I play. And that doesn't make for a very happy life, always, you know? When you're always working, always, always working, you know? So what you put out there is what comes back, and when you're putting out exhaustion, and you know, it's not, not a good scenario. So. How about myself play a little bit more? And I'm feeling much more balanced, much more even, and uh, just enjoying what I'm creating. But life, you know, I, I like that picture too. See how life does? Mm. Who would think that a little plant could do something like that? But yet it does, because life is going to find its way. Life is going to express itself. Now here's the thing, the reason why so many of us are not feeling like my life is my masterpiece, it's just not my fault, I don't want it like that, is because we are creating from our default settings. Anyone know that idea? And where do those default settings come from? From childhood, right? From people saying, from authority figures, from your parents, and we internalize these things. So the default setting that you may be creating from is not not being good looking enough, right? I'm not pretty enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not thin enough, I'm not filling the blank, right? How many of us are walking around with this idea? And these are the filters through which we see of not enough. So the universe, when when we talk about this idea of creating and, and we plant the seeds, right? The universe gives back what you believe. It is done unto you as you believe. It's not done unto you as you wish. It's not done unto you as you hope. It's not done unto you even as you deserve. It's done unto you as you believe. So if you have these lenses that you're looking at life through of not enough, what do you think you're creating? Not enough. enough, Everything that reflects back to you is going to reinforce your belief that there is something wrong. Right? Yeah, it sucks. 
<laughs> and people don't tell you this. We're just all in this kind of default mode, like victims of life, when the fact is that we are co-creators in our experience. As Donna and Norma shared last week, we are each the image and likeness of the creator, not in that we look like God, but that we are creative as God is creative. Again, not the whole thing. We didn't create the, the universe, right? We create the stars, the moon, the sun, the sky, all of that. But we've created our life experience with those raw materials that life gave us. That is how we are the creative essence. And we're not the whole of God, just like a drop of water is not the ocean. But the drop of water is part of the ocean. It is the essence of ocean, right? It's all included. So we are God's stuff. When we say that God is all there is, and how many religions teach that? Every single one, right? All of the world's ma major religions teach that there is this one thing that is greater and all-encompassing. Yet, we want to separate it out. Like, there's God out there, and there's me over here. Like, I have to let it in, or not let it in. When the fact is that it is always here, it's like the, the principles of science, like electricity and and the gravity, laws of nature, that always existed. We may not have always known they existed. We may not know how to use them, but it doesn't change the fact that it's always there. Same with us. We are part of that creative essence that is God, whether we know it or not. When we understand, then we we're working with a different set of rules here, right? Then different things are possible. So, Notice where you're creating from those default settings. Is there anything in your head that's telling you? And you're creating from fear, creating from doubt. Again, we're putting those seeds out there into the world of fear and doubt, and what do you get? Yeah, more of the yeah. same. More <coughs> of the same. It makes sense, right? Yeah. It's not like rocket science. I don't know why we don't figure this out earlier. <laughs> What's that? We wouldn't grow then. That's true, right? This gives us opportunities to grow. Very good, thank you. So the mind, how many of you know this? The mind is a meaning-making machine. Have you ever looked at it that way? <laughs> we human beings want to be meaning of everything, he, and in, especially in the absence of information, right? Doesn't your mind just want to fill in all the blanks? Right? And you're telling yourself this story, except for you, the story is the truth. There's like, there's what happened, and then there is what we make up about what happened. And we think that they are the same thing. Well, they may not be. Have you ever had a wrong opinion or a wrong thought or a wrong belief? Anybody? <laughs> right? But we're very partial to our points of view, aren't we? <laughs> Certainly this must be the truth because I am thinking it. Right? And it shows up like this is the truth. So... Something happens and we make up a story about it and then we behave a certain way, right? Because when things happen, it brings up feelings. And how many of you know you, you behave differently depending on how you're feeling? Uh, right? Anybody else get here get hangry? <laughs> right? You're hungry, right? Things are happening, feeling overwhelmed, and you behave a certain way, right? Meantime, when you're, when you're feeling good, when you're feeling nurtured, when you're feeling happy, you behave other kinds of ways, right? So what happens when we call this the ladder of inference? There's the thing that happened, and then you make up something about it. And you get certain kind of feelings. And then you behave a certain way, and people don't understand what's going on. <laughs> so we have to check ourselves continually, checking yourself to make sure that what you are seeing and what you're interpreting is true, right? Anybody else have to do that? Mm -hmm. I know I had an incident that happened here very recently to me, and I, it was like it came at me like this, and you know, somebody said such and such, and I'm waiting for some more information, and the information wasn't coming, so I made up a big story about it. You know, only in my head it wasn't a story, it was the truth. And then I behaved accordingly. And that's not always pretty. <laughs> but has anybody not done this? Hmm. Anybody not done this? I know I've shared this idea in workshops before, and this one woman said, oh my gosh, I just realized the only exercise I really ever get is jumping to conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> so true, right? <laughs> so true. 
Oh my gosh, I can think of so many stories. Um, my 40th birthday, that was a really good one. You over 40? I'm over 40. It was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, I don't do birthdays. Like, it's not a big thing in 40. But 40 was a big one, so I was telling my husband, you know, just reminding him because his love language is not gifts. Mine really isn't either, but I just, it's 40, you know, it's a big deal. So I told him, make sure the kids knew. The day of my birthday, I get up and there's like hardly any recognition. You know, I'm like, what's going on here? You know? And I started feeling some kind of way, you know? And then I started behaving some kind of way. Only at the end of the day, we were invited to my parents' house and I got there and it was a huge party. Huge party. <laughs> and, whoops. And here I was thinking I'm married to a jerk who can't even, <laughs> even when I tell him it's my birthday, he doesn't acknowledge it. Hmm. That was a little embarrassing. Anybody else ever done that? <laughs> so, so, you know, you have to learn to separate the story from the truth. And the fact is that we are all making up stories all the time, all the time. And I worked this, when I first was turned on to this idea with my kids, like we would be, I remember going through a toll booth and the toll operator just was, seemed like she was a little rude or something like that. I was like, oh, that was, that was interesting. And we pull away and I asked my kids, what do you think that was about? So maybe she had a fight with her husband <laughs> before we were here, or maybe she hates her job. And we just started making up all these stories but the thing is, you realize you're making up a story. So you might as well make up a story that serves you, right? The thing is that we're making up stories that serve our belief systems. And if you're coming from that default mode, and you're coming from a place of people always take advantage of me, when the thing happens, what do you think the story is going to be that you make up about it? And it feels like the truth. It feels like the truth. So. I'm just gonna encourage you, this is like a lifelong exercise to do this when the thing happens and you start feeling yourself going into your story. Like first identify what your story is. Are you, are you, are you coming from one of those things? One of those not enough things or one of those doubt things? You know, and notice when you're telling yourself the story and then check it. Because very often we create these stories when we're little kids and it becomes the filter through which we see life and we see ourselves, and we create our expectations. There's that word, create. So stop being a meaning-making machine. The, the acronym, do we have any kids in here? No, 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 no. Okay, so we're all graduates of MSU. What that stands for? <laughs> Making shit up. <laughs> I know people who have like advanced degrees from MSU. <laughs> Right, I think I have an associate's, but <laughs> some people have like doctorates and stuff. So, so Ed, stop making stuff up, or at least realize you, you're probably not going to stop doing it. At least realize when you're doing it, and have those people that you can check in with. You know, so before I fire off the email, I have to call a friend and say, "Would you look at this and tell me am I seeing what I think I see? Am I interpreting this correctly?" before I get sent, and then I get rid of the first draft, <laughs> write the next one. <laughs> so how are your, no, today is Palm Sunday. I just found out last night what Palm Sunday is. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I was raised in a, in a tradition where you know, we knew what Palm Sunday was. Yeah, and so for those of you who don't know, as, as the story goes, um, Jesus had just done this amazing miracle and raised Lazarus from the dead. And it was like four days later, and Passover was starting, which is the um, the commemoration of the Jews coming from uh, coming out of slavery from Egypt. So Jesus was on his way into Jerusalem um, after just having done this amazing miracle, and people thought, "Oh, this guy is amazing! He's amazing! This is like he's it, man! He's got to be the king!" So he comes in on, on a donkey, which I thought was a little odd. <laughs> because you think if he was, you know, he's this big ruler king guy, he's going to be on a horse. But no, he's on a donkey. Now, metaphysically, think about what a donkey is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super stubborn, right? Yeah. Like they're just, uh, yeah, stubborn, I guess that's the best word. The other thing is they're not going to move. If there is fear 
like they, they, they hold to their intuition, like that looks dangerous, I'm not even trying that. Okay, so that's a little a little aside. But anyway, he, he goes in on this donkey, and then the people are like, their equivalent of the red carpet was the palm fronds. So they threw their coats on the ground, and they put their palm fronds, and they welcome this amazing healer man who was going to deliver them from these awful Romans. So this is the beginning of the Passion Week, right? We know what happens like by next week. So think about that. It wasn't even, was it five days before they were stringing him up on the cross? Right? He went from being like this amazing, wow, he is everything, to like, by Friday? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Pontius Pilate is asking the crowd, like, what do you want to do? Would you rather have Barabbas? Should we save him or should we save Jesus? They're like, save Barabbas. <laughs> it's, it's just like, I don't know. When I think back on these stories, it's, I have to use my husband's, um, what is the word he says? It makes sense if you don't think about it. <laughs> there are a lot of things that make sense if you don't think about it. Again, part of our programming, part of what we're taught to believe. This is the story just anyway. It's like living today. What's that? It's like living today. Like living today. Exactly, right? We don't know what's true, what's false, what's the story people are making up, what's the story I'm making up. We're all making up stories. And it makes sense if you don't think about it. <laughs> but we're, th we're thinkers in here, right? Right? We like to pull these things apart and think about it. So a lot of people want to crucify. Oh yes, yes. A lot of people um, want to crucify others. But there, there is that. <laughs> there is that, right? The necessity, the necessity of the crucifixion. <laughs> You know, I mean, all Christianity is built on this very story here, right? That this this healer, this amazing Son of God, um, who came with with only the best of intentions, right? Actually, was was betrayed and tortured and humiliated in the worst of possible ways. You know, and then we're told that that's that's for us. That's because you're a sinner. That's because I'm a sinner. Like. That's, I'm just, I'd just be straight. I can't be anything else. But that's the part of the story that really <laughs> is so repulsive to me. You know, like, yep, yep, yep. I would never ask anyone to do something, to suffer, to do anything that because of something I did. That's just my, my thing, you know? So feeling like because somebody else did that, it absolves me, never set right for me. It doesn't work. It doesn't, right? It only makes sense if you don't think about it. <laughs> so, so that's that. There's that part of the story, but I think in the bigger picture of it, if you think like here is this this person, this human being, this God, human, whatever, however you want to look at it, all the same as us, right? Because that's one of the distinctions of what we teach here versus a more traditional church is that. Instead of looking at Jesus as the great exception, we look at him, the Christ, as a great example. That we all have Christ consciousness. We all have that capacity within us. So here is this individual who gave it all up and was still misinterpreted, betrayed, tortured, humiliated, all this awful stuff. And yet, we know what happened on the third day. He rose. You know, whether you believe the story literally, not, whatever, metaphorically, he came back up, you know, and, and the light, right, to be the light of the world, to shine, to be that, that incredible brilliance and, and healing um, presence. So I think that is probably true for each and every one of us. How many of you have ever felt crucified? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, and when you look back now, maybe, I don't know if you're still in it. It might be hard to get that kind of perspective, but were there things that you learned, right? Were there things that that came out of you that you were able to express that was only because of the killing off of what was no longer necessary and good for you, right? It's, it's never fun, it's never fun. I can't imagine, you know, I'm trying, you know, I think about this story and I think about Christ, you know, and, and all that, if he, he in fact went through this, like he would have to at some point be thinking, WTF, like, 
<laughs> right? My God, why have you forsaken me? I mean, like, I'm doing everything right. Everything you ask, everything I was expected to do, and this is how I'm, you know, how I'm repaid? This doesn't even make any sense. But it is part of the human story. And it's everybody's story. We've all been that figure, you know, up on the cross. We've all been the betrayer. You know, and if you think you haven't, think a little longer. <laughs> right? Whether you intended to or not, somebody is looking at you as Judas. And somebody else has been Judas for you. Right? We've all been all of those, those parts and pieces. That's one of the beautiful things, I think, about the Bible. When you can look at it from a different angle, a more metaphysical perspective, that all of those stories, and all of those dramas and adventures and whatever, it's really all part of our journey. We are all of those parts at one time or another. So this is the, the Easter story. And we see it even in, in the world, right? It's springtime. We come out of winter where everything looks dead and gloomy and dark and, and sad. And then spring comes. And the trees that look dead suddenly are budding with, with flowers and, and new growth. It's just, it's life. It's life. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's just the way it is. When you can accept that, it makes things a little easier, I think. So this is from Eric Butterworth. I love this quote. All that really counts is what's happening within you. Within you is a limitless, unborn potential of creativity. There's that word. And substance. And the present experience may be your greatest opportunity to give birth to it. So whatever that thing is that you may be going through now, and maybe everybody I talk to is going through some kind of challenge. If it's not them personally, it's a friend or family member, we're all going through it, everybody. So maybe it's an opportunity, all right? Thus tragedy can become a blessing, the disadvantage can become an advantage, the failure can become an opportunity, and the disappointment can become his appointment. And I put it in quotations because we don't really you know, say God is he or she. You know. So your disappointments, and that can become, it can become a defining moment for you, whatever this thing is that you may be going through. But we get to decide. So here's the thing, we're all making up stories all the time, right? So own your story. Own your story and realize that you are the one that gets to write the ending. Right? You get to choose how this goes. Be the hero of your story. So we want to be conscious creators. Again, because we're creating all the time. But we're creating unconsciously. Many, often. Many of us are creating unconsciously. So we want to be conscious creators. And I want to see conscious creators everywhere. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I want to see conscious creators in City Hall. I want to see conscious creators in our prison system, in our school system. I want to see conscious creators in Congress. Mm -hmm. What would happen? What could happen to our world if people could really grasp this idea, this understanding of being the creators of our experience and to do it on purpose mm -hmm. for the benefit of themselves and others? What would that be like? Amazing. So be a conscious creator because change is coming, whether you want it or not. And sometimes we get those little nudges, you know, like those little insights inside of you says, oh, maybe I should, I should take care of this business. You know, maybe I should, well, I'm not going to get into mine, but <laughs> a few things like that, you know, that, that you know you need to do it and you don't do it fast enough and then you get that metaphorical two by four upside the head that makes you do it. That ever happened to anybody else? <laughs> yeah. So we can be conscious and notice the things as they're coming and tend to them as they come along. Mm -hmm. And don't wait till you get hit upside the head. Sometimes you get hit anyway. Usually it's a little yeah. tap. It's a little tap. Yeah. Yeah. A little tap. Yeah. <laughs> you need to make this change. You need to make this change in this yes. And then it goes bam. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And sometimes, it, like I said, it just happens, right? People get sick, um, lose jobs, things happen in life. So we can be 
conscious when those things happen. Again, my favorite quote, if you come here, you've heard it many times before, is, is from, um, mm -hmm. anyway, it's this. <laughs> that I don't know why the name is gone, but between stimulus and response, there is a space, Victor Frankl, thank you. Between stimulus and response, there is a space, right? Between what happens and what you do about it, there is a space. So don't react, right? <laughs> Take that space. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is your power to choose your response. And in that response is your freedom and your growth. That's part of why we teach spiritual practices here. And why we meditate and why we do mindfulness because it expands the space between what happened and what you do about it. <coughs> right? So you can start practicing this. And that will keep you from automatically going into your default mode. You can choose another way. Choose another way. So be a conscious creator. Number one, recognize the universal truth. You're not in charge of everything. There is something <laughs> bigger, right? And we get to channel that energy. We get to use it. We're not creating it. We just get to use it. Right? So recognize that universal truth and your role and your responsibility. Right? Your role is to use that to your benefit and the benefit of the people around you. Right? Not creating from default. Release. So you're going to recognize and then you're going to release the stories and those default interpretations that don't serve you. Maybe the stories you told yourself or accurate or necessary for a time in your life, right? Maybe the story is you have to protect yourself from other people because people are not reliable, right? Maybe, I don't know, maybe a, a parent figure didn't take care of you, so you have to, you know, I have to keep my, my protection from other people. And then you go into relationships with significant others and you still have that protection, but you don't need it anymore. It doesn't serve you. So maybe you need, maybe let it go, right? But don't don't we we just kind of get out of the default? I mean that's what the the spiritual path I think this path of enlightenment isn't about becoming some somebody new or somebody different. It's about letting go of all that is not you, of all the stuff that doesn't serve you, right? Of all the lies and all the BS that we have swallowed hook, line, and sinker. So release. The last thing, rise, rise. We all get knocked down. Get your butt back up and do what you came here to do because life is here to be lived, to be lived. And we get those, you know, reminders. Stop crying. Beautiful young lady in our community that lost her life a week ago. Not even 20 years old. Let that be a reminder right, that you're here to live our fullest here and now. Because no time is not promised to any of us. Right? So are we here to bicker with one another? Are we here to be petty? Are we here to get my little slice of the pie? Is it like, um, you know, who, he who dies with the most toys wins. What are you really here for? You know, are we here to accumulate stuff? Like, for what? For what? That's the quest. That's the thing. That's why you're here. You know, you're not here by accident. We're each one of us here to, to live our best lives. Get back in touch with why are you here? What is your purpose? And get on task with that. Let that other shit go. Right? It doesn't, it's not necessary, it doesn't serve you, swaying you down. So, rise, take risks. And what I mean by taking risks is not doing stupid things, <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't do, don't do things that are gonna put your life in jeopardy, but by risking, I mean do the things that are gonna bring you closer to your dreams, right? The things that, that are gonna take you out of that box that you've been living in. And, and do the things that, that, are, that are going to help you live your life purpose, right? Remember your value. Remember your worth. Remember why you're here. Remember that you did not create yourself. You are here for a reason and a purpose. Now start doing it.
Ernest Holmes, um, for those of you who are new or are unfamiliar with Centers for Spiritual Living, what we teach is called the Science of Mind, and the founder of this teaching was Ernest Holmes, and this is a quote from him. What, what Ernest did was, was distill the uh, wisdom of all different religious traditions and philosophical traditions and pull those common threads and teach that. Right? So what we teach is universal principle. You can be black, white, gay, straight, two years old, 20 years old, 100 years old, it doesn't matter, it's universal, right? So it applies to everybody. That's what we teach here. So you can come here and be you know, from a Hindu tradition or from a Buddhist or even an atheist and hopefully feel comfortable when you walk in the door here. That's, that's my, my intention. So here's what Ernest said. There is an irresistible, universal, and divine urge within us to be happy, to be whole, and to express the fullness of life. Do you think that's true for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I can't think of anyone who doesn't want that. <laughs> the latent divinity, right, the God within us, stirs our imagination, and because of its insistent demand, impels and compels our growth. This God stuff within us just wants to come out. It'll break concrete. That's how much it wants to express. It is back of every invention. It proclaims itself through every creative endeavor. It has produced sages, saints, and saviors. Mm -hmm. And will, it will, when permitted, create a new world in which war, poverty, sickness, and famine will have disappeared. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. And maybe we just start by doing it in our own lives. Right? We can't stop war in the Ukraine. None of us here is going to stop that. But we can stop the wars inside of ourselves. Right? We can put the end to the battles with our family members and our neighbors and our friends. Doesn't mean you have to invite them over to dinner. Doesn't mean you have to hang out. You just don't have to don't hate don't carry that, that pain and anger in your heart. Each one of us can start and create this, this world. And actually, that's where it starts, isn't it? Right? It's in here. It has to begin here. That's the only way it's going to happen, is inside of each and every one of us. We can't wait for a savior, something out there, to do it for us. Right? Each and every one of us is the author of our own story. And the quicker you can get a hold of that, that and that means owning it all. We're talking about owning your story, own it all. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, you know? That reminds me, I'm, I'm a little, little squirrely today, but uh, a book that um, Pat Feldman, Pat Felton, excuse me, uh, lent me, or gave me, actually, a few months ago. And it's called The Midnight Library. Has anybody read it, Midnight Library? Yeah, it's a great, Awesome. It's a work of fiction, and in this story, the, uh, the protagonist of the story, the, the hero, is a woman. She's in her 30s, and she's in a dead-end job, and her life is like falling apart, and she's like over it. You know, her cat dies finally, and she's like, this is it. <laughs> so <laughs> she takes her bottle of antidepressants, and she swallows a bunch of pills and tries to kill herself. Only she doesn't die. She ends up in the world between worlds. <laughs> And in her world, between worlds, it's a library. And there's like infinite number of books that are just lining the shelves everywhere. And so she picks a book off the shelf. Actually, no, the first book she, she picks up is her book of regrets. All the kada, shut up, all that stuff. And it's when she opens it up, like she sees some of it and then it bursts into flames. And then she gets another book off the shelf and it's Oh my God, it's the life if she had married that guy. <gasps> and she goes there. Remember Quantum Leap? Mm -hmm. That show, yeah, right? Like yeah, somebody yeah, would jump yeah. in. So she jumps into the life and she gets a glimpse of what that life would have been if she'd taken this turn. Mm -hmm. And at a point, she gets tired of that. It was like, oh wow, it wasn't all that. And she ends up back. <laughs> right? So then she can pick another book off the shelf. And wow, that's if she had majored in whatever in college or, you know, if she'd taken this trip. So all these different things, she's trying them all out. And I'm not going to tell you any of the spoilers or anything else. You just have to read it. But after reading that book, 
or while I was reading the book, I was thinking, wow, there's a version of me that is 300 pounds. There's a version of me that went to Princeton. There's a version of me that became a, an MD. But there's a version of me that divorced, right? And there's a version of me that never had kids. Right? Can, you, can, you, can you feel that? And I don't know what you all think, but this gets into this, like, some really deep stuff about is all of this stuff happening at the same time? Right? The multiverse, right? Like, maybe all of this stuff is out there, like a giant video game. And when you get to a decision point and you go this way, you cancel all this other stuff out. But it's still out there somewhere, you know? Which leads me to think now. So when things are decision points here and now, if I go this way, going to take you into this world. And if I go this way, it's going to take me into this whole other world. They're all kind of existing. It's a fascinating idea. Hmm? How many of you have lives, you wonder? Like, wow. Well, yeah, we all do. We all do. So this is your opportunity. And with all of that in mind, I was going to talk about that earlier, so I just kind of brought it in. Think about that. Your decisions, what is going on in your life right now, those points and take that time to create on purpose. Again, recognize the truth, release what is not so, and rise. rise. All right, so here's our affirmation for today. I invite you to make this your own. I like to create these little, like, you know, for a sentence, so you can put it up on your refrigerator, or take a picture of it, whatever you need to do, and just kind of, you know, practice it, practice it. So, I embrace the truth, release falsehood, and rise strong as I create a life I love. You want to say it with me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I embrace the truth, release falsehood, and rise strong. As, as I create a life I love. It's so good. So good. It is. It's all right. I think we have a song. We do. We do. We have a song that goes really, really well with this. Oh, uh -huh. this idea. Do I bring little folks in? Yes. Let's see what little folks can do. What have little folks been creating today? All right, guys. Tell them what we created. I am so creative. I am so creative. I am so creative. I am so creative. And what did you create? What did you create? Show um, a cat. Well, I created a flower. I created a lion tiger. Mm -hmm. wow. And what is that? A potato. A potato. A potato. And a potato.
quite a bit misunderstood because of my mental disorders. But I want to say this, this place that we're in right now saved my life. It gave my children a place to grow up. It taught them how to be right. And I don't mean right as in R-A-G-H-T. I mean as in right, R-I-T-E, right. Let me be specific. The leaders that are here, I honor them. And I'm blessed to be in their shadows when they stand above me. And I'm blessed to be their friends when they stand beside me. And I'm blessed to know the damn difference. So, this is the place where we share our, our abundance. And I, I am giving all I have today of my time and my talent and my treasure because I know that this is the lighthouse. This place, you guys. And without you, I would not be able to do what I have to do. This place also does not exist without that love. So I need volunteers. I need people that are willing to step up, not to invest. I don't want you to invest. You can keep all your money. I don't care about the money. They can give some. They can give money. <laughs> they can give all the money there. But the truth is when you put your intention, yes, thank you. When the force gets involved, <laughs> when the force gets involved with things, money is so small. So don't get lost in the money. Don't get attached to that money. Because just like that tree that fell in the backyard, that money will leave you. And if you don't give it away or invest it, you might as well not do anything with it. We have a lot of work on the grounds that we need to do in order to be back up to par. I'm going to be holding a meeting afterwards and talking about the GROW team. So if you're interested, please stay after and see me. We're working on making the grounds safe. And I sure could We had a tree that came down. So we are asking for people to come in and give up their time and their talent to get that taken care of and to get the grounds safe again so that our little ones can run around outside. Because let's face it, life is everywhere, right? And as Angel was saying, the creativity and the gifts that come through this center and through you people and through everyone. We put a GoFundMe out there for our littlest guru and we have raised over $7,000 for the family. And we keep pushing it out and we keep rising because we know that when something like this happens, it takes a village to show up and to be. And so, in that spirit, we know that we are grateful for everyone and everything that has ever been given and gifted from your hands to this table. Anything you've ever done to give to this community, thank you. Thank you, thank you, because this room exists because of the givingness of this community. Friendships. Where it, when stuff like this happens, all of us come together. And when it's not happening, when we're in the flow and everything is awesome and we're not dealing with tragedy, still, we give of our joy and we give of our kindness because pain exists. We're not saying pain isn't going to exist, it does. And just as pain exists, so does bills and taxes and roofs and air conditioning. And refrigerators need to be replaced, and trees need to be removed, and thus we are here sharing our treasure. And I appreciate y'all because we do have some outstanding stuff going on. So thank you for anything that you give today, you've given in the past, anything you'll give in the future. I invite you to do the affirmation with me. It is the nature of life to give of itself, as it is the trees' nature to bear fruit, and the flowers' nature to bloom. It is my nature to share the gifts of my time, talent, and treasure. I participate in the divine flow of life, giving generously and receiving abundantly. I am blessed, and I am a blessing. I am grateful, and so it is. And Norma has the, tre the basket. She's going to be walking around with the basket, and Erin has a treasure chest for any prayer requests that you have out there. 
And then uh, if the one that's sitting on your chair, we have ministers and practitioners and prayer chaplains that pray over these requests throughout the week. If you're somebody who's savvy on your phone and would like to go ahead and text the tithe, that's the number. You set it up one time and you can just do it. You can send whatever dollar amount and just goes. But it is the givenness of all of us that makes this happen and takes care of the items that we need to take care of. And together, we take care of our extended family. And for those online that is listening, you can also go to PayPal or on our website, csmocala slash donate, and you can give that way too. And we're activating that law of give and receive. Just like that gentleman activated that law of give, he didn't know he was gonna receive at the end, but there you have it, one city block, and all of those things lined up so that he could get the exact thing that he needed, which is nourishment for his body. And everybody take a collective deep breath with me. I speak my word knowing that the abundance of the universe is assured and that every single prayer request already has the answer embedded in the question itself. I give thanks for the givingness of this space and for those online who are giving of their time, talent, and treasure. Whatever it is that you are giving, I give thanks that you are activating that law of abundance in your life. I know that it is multiplying, pressed down, manifesting, overflowing for each and every person that activates that law. I release it now, knowing that it's already done, and so it is. Thank you, everyone. So we get some announcements. This is what's coming up, man? Our little ones need people who like hanging out with little guys. They will teach you some stuff. I had a fun time back there drawing. You know, it's been a while since I drew a flower. Isn't that kind of sad? I don't use crayons very often. And it was a lot of fun. Right? I can see why you want to do it. So I had a lot of fun back there being creative and learning about you know, meteors and the dinosaurs and how other animals came to be created and how life is everywhere. And them children taught me stuff. I said, wait a minute, where's life? And Roman says, well, everywhere. And I said, well, I call life God. What do you like? He said, well, some people call it God. Some say Jesus. Some say goddess. I said, yeah, I know. Some say spirit, right? He's like, yeah. I said, well, what's the why? And why do we do this? And he said, well, it depends on where you're from. That's your language for God. Mama. <laughs> right? right? Depends on your family and your culture, your word for life. Oh, thank you, Roman. Thank you, Sissy. And now they have another affirmation because I asked them what they think today's affirmation should be. I am beautiful. I am smart. I said, what about I am creative? Oh, I am creative. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to add that to your affirmation bank just so you know. So if you want to be a part of that awesomeness that's back there, please see Norma. She will help you out. She's our principal <laughs> and keeps us all on track. And also, if you do not get our Spirit Monthly newsletter, it just kind of tells you what's going on and give, gives you the lowdown as to what's happening because I know there's a lot of stuff moving and shaking and happening within our community. So you want to be abreast of that. So sign up. If you want to be a part of the newsletter, please let somebody, who's going to grab that email address? On the website, on on the website and on Facebook. Thank you. On the website and on Facebook, sign up for that Spirit Monthly. You'll be glad that you did. Next week, we are doing circles, discussions, circle discussions. We're going to sit down and talk to each other, get to know each other. What's up, Lala? <laughs> and talk about what we talked about today. And then, what's coming up April 23rd? 
Poetry Slam. Slam. Talk about creativity, right? It is natural, National Poetry Month, and we are doing a Poetry Slam this month on the 23rd from 7 to 9.30 p.m. If you are somebody who creates that way, if spirit pours through you through pen and paper in that way, we would love to hear it and to witness it. Do we have to present the poems beforehand to someone? Or? Yes, you need to present the poem. Not, not You're not gonna do that? No. no. That said, no, we're not gonna do it's that. So you're just gonna. Set stuff. Okay, so if you stuff. wanna just see her and she'll get you on the lineup, she'll give you the lowdown as to how that works. Also, I think that even if you write the poem and don't want to perform, because some people are writers, not performers, that's okay too. Bring your poem. I'm sure somebody with a big mouth like me will get up here and perform <laughs> their poem. <laughs> To the best of our ability, right. give it as much fire behind it as we can. But there are lots of people who love theater and who love being on stage. So please don't be shy. Bring your stuff. We want to hear how spirit shows up as you. And we have upcoming classes. Foundation. <laughs> Finally, right? Everybody's been asking for foundations. In Center for Spiritual Living, we practice something called the science of mind. And what we do is we dive into ourselves and pick ourselves apart and learn how we show up in the world as spirit expressed. And so we learn all these tools and what this teaching is through foundations. I invite everyone to sign up for foundations. This is a certificated class that if you wanted to become a practitioner like myself and Norma, you have to have one foundation class. There's like four different choices, but I personally took foundations and I think that that was the most you know, give you the biggest picture. So that is coming up. The class is going to be ran by the Ecclesiastical Circle, myself, Norma, and Reverend Cindy. We're going to be taking turns, probably, and um, teaching the class. The same thing with Prosperity Plus. How many people have heard of Prosperity Plus? We're talking about activating prosperity in your life. If you'd like to do that, then this is a class for you. If you're saying, man, I need more of life in my life, this is your class. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fill in the blank. It's on Wednesdays, June 1st, we're going to be starting that. It is an evening course, and we are going to be trying to do a hybrid. So some people cannot come out at night, so what we're going to do is just link you in through Zoom so that you can be a part of the class. Okay, so don't worry about it. And we may do the same with foundations, we'll see. Because I'm sure there's going to be people online that don't even live here that want to take the class too. I don't want to ex them out. So, hello, online land, you can still take the class. <laughs> <laughs> I am special, thank you. <laughs> Please talk about me. I am special. So is everybody else. There's nobody else like me, thank God. I don't think the world can handle two. <laughs> the prayer for protection is coming up. Did I miss any share of us, Cindy? Hi. No? Anybody else have anything? The GROW team is meeting right after okay. service. Please see Angel. We really, really need as many hands as possible in the garden to, to get this thing cleaned up. Do we have prices on the classes yet? Yes, we do. Classes that are certificated, they're $300 for foundations total, or you can pay it class by class. 10 weeks at $30 a class. It is certificated. So you do get your certificate from home office. Once you have six classes, if you want to become a practitioner, just come and see me or Norma, and we will tell you what the practitioner, how to get there. Um, it's probably a stupid idea, but when we say that prayer, I think we have to substitute the word life for God one time around, and the prayer comes out. Ah, well, we can try it. I see. So, to say, instead of saying God, we say life. Yeah, just this one time and see. Um, love, yeah. love yeah. maybe. Yeah. See how it feels. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Interesting. It'd be it's an interesting thing. Life. What do y'all think? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it together. The prayer for protection. The light of light, light surrounds us. us. <laughs> the love of light upholds us. The power of light protects us. And the presence of life watches over us. Wherever we are, life is, and all is well. How interesting is that? <laughs> it is a unique. It was created. It was created. Yes, it was. That was interesting. Thank you. Yes, yes. Wherever we are, life is, God is, and so it is. And so it is. So it is. So it is. All right.
Joyful expressions. Yeah. Y'all want to drum? We love drumming, y'all. Anybody else want to drum? We got tons of drums. On the way out. We'll drum on the way out. If you want to join us, let me know. We got drums. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys. See y'all next week. Circle conversations. Circle conversations.